Welcome to Cripple System Battle Report 13. This is Dan, and I'm playing Crix. And this is Josh, I'm playing Mercs. This is Stevel, I'm playing Mercs and Kador. All right, so as we can see, uh, just Steve, getting... Well, you're not playing any, any models. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I thought we were just talking about the shit we play. <laughs> Wait, you play? <laughs> uh, from time to time, I do. Um, especially back in time, I, I, I played a lot of Mark I. All right, so tonight uh, we have here a matchup of Cricks on Mercs. I'm on the right. I'm playing uh, Gatsby 2. Uh, Dick. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. Uh, no, it's, say, good. it's good practice, though. Mm-hmm. I say, I'm getting to be quite the dickbag for battle reports. Last time it was me with Denegra 2. This time it's Gatsby 2. Well, now you just got to bring Haley and you're all set. Next time. All right. Next time. And then now, I've got, uh, on my side, Damiano. You can't really see him. Yep. So my list uh, is Max Bane Thralls with UA, Max Bane Knights with UA, Max Satixis Raiders with UA, uh, Min Satixis Blood Witches with UA, Min Bile Thralls, uh, Tartarus, um, Gerlach, uh, a Helldiver, and a Night Wrench. And uh, on my side, I've got uh, Damiano's Tier 3 Force. So that's uh, a min unit of Steelhead Halbers, a max unit of Steelhead Halberdiers, a max unit of rifles, two min units of Cav, which is one of his tier bonuses, lets you take two, and Stannis, a Vanguard, and the Galleon there. Um, for whatever reason, fate will not let me retire this list. I've been trying to find a good replacement, I just can't make it work. So here we are, trying it out against Crix. Yep. So, kind of a little interesting with the way that the train is set up with a, a forest and a rough train piece on my side. Josh actually won the rolled... Uh, the dice roll and chose to actually pick size as opposed to going first. The terrain hurts the the list. No pathfinder except for the galleon means that there's a lot of infantry models that are going to get caught up on each other. I halfway through this game, I began to regret that decision. So you'll see how it goes. And uh, what do the uh, um, the the things that look like sand traps? What do they represent? Those are the zones. Okay. Yeah. Ah, so this. So is, okay. Yeah, that's our scenario here. Uh, uh, rally point. Rally point. So yeah. two large zones, and then two objectives that uh, grant all solos within four inches of the inspiration, which actually came into play for both sides because Pretty we harsh. had multiple units that should have broken but couldn't because of solos. Yeah, okay. It's pretty. It all makes sense to me now. Mm-hmm. Pretty actually pretty good for Damianos. I mean, nines is a g- good leadership, but. Be surprised how often you'll roll that ten. Oh yeah, just to just to f yourself. And I say this was breaking a four game streak of having at least one Satixis Raider unit break every game, uh, multiple times. So, so yeah, it's a nice. I like this scenario. The twenty fourteen stuff is really good. Yep. So this is me just finishing up my turn, throwing a bunch of clouds down, uh, and then I think that was the last move I went. So then I switch it over to Josh. Um, as a little interesting note, we decided to move the clock down to the bottom of the screen uh, so that it could show up better for the camera. Um, but yeah, neither of us can actually see our time. So we have we have no idea how much time we're using. We're kind of, you'll see me possibly bouncing in and out of the shot to check that later on. Which was smarter than me. I just kept playing at my normal pace and then panicked later. Also, it's kind of amusing to see us in, I think this is slightly sped up to fit the hour because Dan... Dan and I played a lot of models. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was what we say forty-one versus like fifty-two. Models yeah, something, something like that. It's there's a it's a pretty high model count on both sides. And Dan, where are your uh, where are your stat cards? So are you already cheating or so I'm actually using War Room. I have used War Room exclusively mm-hmm. since it came out. Um, bugs and all, I still I find it much easier to use, and I mean, it's one of the things I've used it enough that I can go pretty much as fast as most people can go with cards on it, but that's just perseverance and dealing with it. Sure. Dan is the one person using War Room exclusively. I mean, I'm also blessed because I have an iPad. Which it does, yeah. It does. Basically, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really the trick, is if you have a good high-end tablet, it'll be fine. I've seen plenty of people try and do it on a phone and get very frustrated so with it. It's uh, Surefoot going up on the uh, Vanguard. and You also had Dead-Eyed the Galleon to give it boosted yes, hit rolls. I, I had, well, it's not to give it an attack. I figured yeah. it could pick off some stuff. I'm thinking I think that may not have been the best choice. Yeah. Well, to be honest, as soon as you said that, I thought I was going to lose that Arc Node. 
Yeah, and that's I mean that would might have been a better shot for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I would have ranged the arc node though. We'll see. Just getting getting the steelheads up there, trying to get as much jam into place as possible. Um, I'm gonna get charged next turn anyway because Satixis move like you wouldn't believe so trying to claim as much territory which is actually pretty doable uh damiano's one of damiano's other tier bonuses is his uh plus two to deployments that's gets you pretty far up the table so my galleon comes apart for easy access otherwise it's impossible to tell where where it is and where it's supposed to be i think there was actually one point where you Took the top off, moved it, put it back on, immediately took it back off the measure. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I, it, that is the downside to it, is it played around a lot. Yeah, I don't think I would have had range for the drag on your arc node. Oh, yeah. But. And that's. Did you magnetize it, or does it just kind of sit on top? It just kind of sits. It's actually the. Uh, the it's actually, it's model a really good flat nice. bottom. Yeah, it, the... it works out really well okay. just to, like, hang on there. It shows what I know for not putting mine together yet. So at this point, Josh, for some reason, decided to just throw a random shot at a Bane Knight. I'm hoping to scatter into Mm -hmm. more. Yeah, yeah, vengeance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no damage was caused, which is a frequent theme, actually. Yeah, I did not have the best dice this game. Not that that really mattered all that much, but there were definitely some points where, like, it would have been a better game for me had it not gone as bad. Please hold as we have an Ukini moment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just moving up, getting things into position. Uh, that's uh, Stannis taking a hand cannon shot, hoping for some lucky rolls there, just to because you can. Mm-hmm. Might as well put put a little damage into them if possible. Hey, if you can take a shot, take a shot. Yeah. Yep. I mean, sometimes sometimes for time reasons, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, playing on a clock sometimes mm-hmm. can definitely change how you do things but it's early it's early there's not a lot happening yet Mm -hmm. and uh one less one less unit to be jammed or one less model to be jammed by is always going to be good right getting the cab into position around some of the obstacles so it's kind of an interesting matchup too because i mean we both have huge infantry swarms but josh has the advantage over me that almost this entire army can move through itself because of stannis Whereas I am constantly yep. actually tripping up over my own massive models. Honestly, one of the things that actually kept me in this game mm-hmm. for for as long. I'm getting getting some more shots, hopefully, and then falling a little short. Which yeah. I would like to claim would be brilliant positioning, but was actually just me guessing and saying, hey, it looks close enough. So at this point, I'm just trying to figure out... So I have Gerlach positioned in such a way that I can probably get to the front line. Uh, the problem is I'd have to charge to do it, which means I'd have to be swinging against the Defense 17 uh, Steelhead because of uh, Surefoot on the Surefoot Vanguard. and Set Defense yep. is a really nasty combination, and I try to abuse it as much as possible. A lot of me pondering and trying to decide. This is uh, this is Dan wasting all of his time. Yeah, <laughs> running the clock out. I don't know. I, don't yeah, know. I mean, <laughs> it definitely. Mm-hmm. It's a good Gatsby two list. I really like it. The problem is this is actually the first time I've played it on a clock in this format, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. I mean, Josh and I play several times a week, but no, I don't have a death clock at my house, so we haven't really been used to playing on the clock. We've been much more relaxed and you know get which, has a, its, which has its own merits it's yeah. good for pos- learning positioning and, and really paying attention to those things but at a certain point you got to start getting used to moving with purpose in a timely manner which i am still struggling a bit with this list 
which is odd because I mean, my protector and army, I play a huge infantry swarm with Krios too, and I actually got that to the point where I could play that in hardcore just from sheer practice. But once again, different army, just kind of getting used to it. Yep. Well, I feel like in this game too, you end up making a lot of attacks. Because the Satixis all have the two attacks each, and you really ended up needing to use a lot of that. Yeah. Um, which we'll see here in a second. As soon as Dan finishes deliberating and actually, you know, takes his turn. This is painful to watch at double speed. I know. Imagine <laughs> imagine having to sit here and wait for Dan to make his move in real time. You were talking to Nathan anyways. <laughs> All right. Now, how do you feel about... Uh, Playing with Damiano over like a uh, 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 McBain, the the actual uh, uh, steelhead guy. Well, I mean, uh, Damiano is the steelhead guy. I thought McBain was. I'm sorry. No, no, no. All the way around. McBain is the uh, tough chin. I am awesome today. <laughs> so you can so, tell that he plays a lot of games of War Machine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially way back in Mark One, before Damiano and McBain existed. Which I actually did, but then I, I just yeah. stopped. Life got in the way. But yeah. yeah. So, Stixis coming in, jamming up, doing what they do. Yeah. I start moving around, basically just a whole bunch of uh, two-man CMAs to try and get around set defense. And ending up needing to basically come in with the headbutt for a lot of them too yeah and this is again I feel like a, a lot of what ends up eating up your time in this list is uh, having to just make lots of rolls yeah and that's with any I mean any infantry swarm or lots of AOEs well yeah any infantry swarm where you get the advance you have to be the one that has to chew through everything whereas you spend a lot more time just moving up and getting in the way I mean, the only saving grace really was the fact that since I was making too many, I had so many two man CMAs, I wasn't doing two attacks for each model. So it's still yeah, only it 10 definitely, attacks. Yeah. That definitely helps. So we spent some time That's figuring out. Uh, another halberdier lost. Kind of where things are at. Yep. They uh, they die like they they go down like, like paper. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's what they're supposed to do though. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Is uh, cheap disposable bodies. Yeah. There's, there's, it's what it's four points for six of them, and uh, I mean they do they do they do good enough work if you can, yeah. if you can get the hits if in. you can get them into position um, or if you can get a good sure foot positioning on them where then they become defense fifteen and kind of hard to hit. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, yeah, they do otherwise go down like sacks of batteries. Yep. So, all right. So here's me sending Gerlock in to see what he can do. So, actually hit his charge attack, um, overtakes and swings on the second one, kills it. Makes managed a... to get into the rifleman, just barely have reach, and flubs it. Yep. So, thank God, because that would be the entire unit of riflemen. Oh, now, yeah. see, now you're in a great position to. To take some uh, take some pot shots, mm-hmm. kind of. I mean, the front guy's engaged, and he's also all kinds of engaged with oh, my yeah. Yeah. vanguard sitting mm-hmm. right there. The upside of reach is that you can engage lots of models. The downside of reach is you can engage lots of models. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, Gerlock only killing two was kind of annoying for me because I don't know why everyone on the internet really seems to hate steelhead riflemen, but every time Josh has used them against me, they've done a ton of work. Yeah, they're. So they're they're one of those units that everyone looks at them and goes, why don't you bring Nis instead for the same points? And I can see that, but at the same time, like people discount what they can do, and sometimes that's a useful weapon in and of itself. It's people look at steelhead riflemen and either don't know what they are mm-hmm. and don't know what they do, or kind of just go, oh whatever, they won't do anything. Nobody likes them, and then yep. so then Gatsby really just moved up. up. Uh, it's going to throw a boosted excarnate at one of them, and then this is. Yeah, this is this is where it that, goes this bad. is where this is where it goes bad. And I, I don't know what you do in with with this particular setup with this particular list. I'm not really sure what to do other than have like you know three lines deep and just pray. Yeah, yeah just try to try to avoid 
mitigate the excarnate. Mm. So I thought the riflemen were far enough back. Um, obviously, that not. does not look good. Well, that yeah. that is the so that's me actually throwing De Mortis out to go collect some souls. Yep. And then I tell you back. And mark that because yep. it's easier rather than trying to. Yeah, there's only four of place. them that were going to really go there. So. Got the Warjacks in it too. That's true. Then the Biothralls move up, so I'm just being careful to make sure I actually. At least the front few where positioning will really matter. The last ones are not as critical figuring out, but the front ones, being really careful to make sure I only go five. Um, this was actually a little bit tricky because, you know, the. Riflemen were actually the only things in Josh's list besides Damiano that didn't have reach, which actually makes getting a good Biothral Purge off a little harder. Just but it did kind of give you a nice yeah. nice little lane into it there, I guess. Yeah. So there we go. Kind of checking what, we get, what you get. You get a pretty good number. You get five of the, five of the Steelhead Riflemen and uh, Stannis, both Jacks. Yep, and then... And Gerlach as well. Gerlach and my Arc Node, and I actually pay for it. I almost blew the Arc Node right off my Night Wrench. It's, yeah, the, that's true. One one column difference would have made mm-hmm. made you lose the Arc Node there. I did, I think, I did two points of Stannis. Uh, uh, it, you didn't actually do anything to Stannis with this, but Corrosion ends up doing two points of Stannis, Stannis, which... You know, yeah. and you got to start plinking away at him yep. with ten boxes. Gerlach might have gotten hurt. The Jacks, neither of them cared. So uh, Gerlach didn't take any damage yeah. from it. I think. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. It didn't if matter. He did, in it any wasn't case. much. Yeah. Um, he did his job. Now he dies. But so, like I said, plugging along with it. The as you can see on the clock, though, I've already spent almost twenty minutes. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of time spent in figuring things out mm-hmm. and rolling a bunch of dice. Yeah, I'd be really happy with how well I was playing if this was normal speed and not double. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we'll just have to we'll have to borrow one of Andy's death clocks. And no kidding. Play some more. Play yeah. some more timed games. So at this point in the turn, I'm just like, okay, everything that can attack has attack. So run some stuff forward. Um, and that. He pops their mini feet to make them. Yeah, just make a line. Just hold, I mean, hold them up and everything. Which mm. I was questioning because honestly, what did I have that was really going to get to them? Yeah, I was just that's uh, you would have lost a couple. I mean, yeah. I did. I didn't end up having some space to make attacks to them, mm-hmm. um, which you'll see. But I just wanted to make sure you couldn't get too crazy with cab charges and so forth. And then that's legitimate. I mean, I mean, backswing. Mm-hmm. And assault shots, yeah, and all of that can can make a lot of attacks. So, and at this point, I'm just like, all right, where can I put Tartarus so that he can give the two units of Texas fearless? Because the last thing I need right now is my front line to break. Uh, had that happen to me in the tournament a few weeks ago, and it was kind of annoying having to walk through my own army to do anything. This is where I'm disappointed that I lost all of those riflemen because mm-hmm. that would have been. Yeah, the, I would have lost half the main that unit. Yeah, and that would have been bad. Yeah, would be would be a lot more comfortable for the galleon to move around at that point. And sadly, now it just appears you have video evidence that the uh, that the riflemen apparently suck. I agree that they do not. Well, oh, I happen to like them. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, they're they're good. But uh, let's be <clears throat> honest here: when uh, they die uh, before they get to do anything, they they do not. Yeah, I don't mean, really they, show don't really show what they can do. They do say steelhead in the name, so yeah. Well, and again, and Dan Dan knows to be afraid of what they can do. Mm-hmm. So I say I was Josh and I were playing a game a few months ago, and I was playing my Legion, and on Saren's feet turn, one unit of rifleman with a money shot from Damiano was a half inch out of shooting uh, Saren off the table. Yeah, like top of two, so. No, I, it really was. It was like yeah. half an inch difference, and it was, what was it, something, let me do the math really quick here. It was way higher of a percentage than it ever should have been. Because, like I said, it was top of two, I had yeah. feed it, I felt pretty safe, and then he's like, eh, if you were half an inch closer, you'd be dead. And I'm like, Egh. Yeah, effectively, rat nine, pow, uh, 15. 15s. Yeah. With a reroll to hit, yeah, and you were sitting in a in a cloud too, yeah. So you you thought you were pretty safe there, but it was 
It was almost yeah, because yeah, boosted nines reroll the hit. It would have been, it would have been bad. So ever since then, I've tried to you know prioritize them, especially in this list, because not having to have any range attacks plinking away at me, other than a few pot shots from the galleon, meant I actually got a massive amount of this list across the table, which was also something kind of throwing me off because. Every time I've played this list before, half of it's died before it's gotten there. So having everything make it, it was actually kind of confusing. Yeah, well, this is also a very melee-heavy list on the other side. Mm -hmm. So moving up some of the models, I think uh, the white white unit, the the small uh, remnants of that uh, min unit of halberds took some swings there. Um, Vanguard doesn't do a whole lot there. I think it does eventually blink away. Oh, that wasn't the Vanguard. That was uh, that was Stannis. Yep. That's right. Stannis like whiffed it hard on Gerlach. Mm-hmm. Uh, shield smash followed by the uh, goose arm, which does a little more. Yeah, this was the yeah. turn that Josh's dice really we just yeah. went yeah, south. They, they look incredibly low this turn. Yeah, it, it, nothing, yeah. nothing good. And then I'm like looking you. at this, going, "Well, what do I do?" Yeah. So at this point, Josh is you know either. Uh, do I back up or do I lose half my force? Which, well, I mean, at this yeah. point, no. The steelhead jam moves in because this mm-hmm. is it's the easy thing. But I was looking at this uh, this side over here with the with the bane knights and the galleon and trying to figure that one out and just kind of switched over for time. So we're gonna get in there and make some attacks. I think they they do some damage here, actually, surprisingly. Yeah, not not too bad at all. Yeah, because I mean, two man CMAs and the Steelheads only need sevens to hit. So uh, yeah, not all of those were. I think there were a couple that weren't, but yeah, mm-hmm. it was mostly it was mostly two man CMAs, just kind of clipping out. A few Which of them. unfortunately for you, you rolled mostly sixes. Yeah. So at this point, I think is when you I think you activated the rifleman, and you did sign that really kind of confused me with the number of attacks you left as you started shooting at the front bane knights. Yeah, I was hoping to clear out some of the bane knights mm-hmm. uh, to make room, essentially more breathing room for the galleon. Because if mm-hmm. I can, at this point, what I'm thinking is if I can clear some of the bane knights out of the way, or if I can reduce the threat of the bane knights, what I can do is move the galleon into position, not only to contest the zone. Uh, but to start to put threat at your caster, ah, okay, um, because it can do a lot of a lot of work and a lot of damage. Also, kind of shielding the galleon at this point, so they they move up into into that space. I'm trying to see what I can remove. Um, I think it ends up kind of they kind of whiff. Mm-hmm. Again, dice not really favoring me much this game. Oh. Uh, and like I said, about halfway through that attack, when it came apparent that you're not going to really have much more shots, is when I started questioning why you. You kept being so persistent just because letting them get a vengeance move off of that as well would have been even worse. Right. Um, I kind of was also thinking to draw them in for okay. a sweep. Oh, yeah. That would do it. I mean, that was the other thing. So the next move here, um, I don't know what order I do this in. I think I actually moved the galleon next. Or did I move it now? Put it yeah. back on there. Yeah, move it now. Mm-hmm. It's just to move them back, move him back. Um, yeah. Which was good because I was already eyeing the how far do I have to move the arc node to put parasite on it? So yep, and so he steps back, hides behind the uh, steelheads a little bit, and we position him, and then we take some speculative shots. Um, pretty standard, getting like two one, getting about three shots out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna. Shooting, shooting at the objective, uh, knowing I was out of range, but hoping to get drifts into the thralls. Because that's pretty much my only shot at this point. Is I didn't have direct line of sight to them, and they're the thing that needs to go. And well, and the and the thing that I can most likely hurt yeah. with the galleons. Uh, Pow seven blast. Pow seven blast. Mm-hmm. You've got an incorporeal unit. You've got bane thralls, and you've got bane knights. Yeah. Bane knights. So a lot mm-hmm. of it over there is just not. Really going to care too much, and then I end up hitting a bunch of uh, Bane Knights, and thank God not killing any of them. 
It's not uh, not not good drifts at all. Not Andy drifts. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, more doing doing all right with some of the rolls now, but it's mm-hmm. just not. It's picking up, but at this point, it's but it's not. Yeah, it's not when yeah. I needed it. That was um, almost an entire round of low rolls. That, yeah. looked, that looked pretty rough. Yeah, I think at this point he had killed <clears throat> two models, maybe. Yeah, it wasn't much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it's the kills weren't that important. Tying you up was hopefully. Yeah. I mean, clearing out more of the side where the galleon was at was sort of the the thing. Mm-hmm. Cav are gonna go now and start. Uh, they just these ones actually just move up. I don't bother to charge with them because I know that they've got the flank bonus on a lot of this and terrain and things being in the way. Yeah, that's what I went to get. Yep, making sure, check and reach on things, seeing where I can get here. And I will bet they're gonna save the day now. They they definitely they do some damage here. Yeah. Um, that side of the board because you're due. You're, you're due at this point. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Dice don't go crazy or anything, but just, the cap hit hard enough with flank to, to take stuff. Yeah, I think that one was actually him taking out the Sea Witch. Uh, yeah. I had already popped mini feet because I'd assume that they wouldn't survive in any way, shape, or form to use it afterwards. So, and Just a lot of back swings. Kind of eating up my time here. Mm-hmm. I still haven't popped feet. Thought about feeding turn one and didn't do it. But I wonder if it would have made the difference. I don't think so. I don't think so. Especially because it does kind of save my bacon here in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was expecting you to feed actually this particular turn. Um, uh, well, at this point, you've got your heavy hitters coming in. Everything everything that's about to hit me is Weapon Master. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Plus three armor is not making that much of a difference. And I was hoping to save the plus three strength um, for the off chance that I could get uh, get a good bead on on an important solo or on Gatsby. Because I, I was... You, you, tend to, you tend to play Gatsby camping a lot of focus. Um, and the chance to kill you right through it is there with the feet. Because that brings me up to a power 24. That's true. So that was that was that was kind of the thought. It was just like, well, it's not helping me that much. I'm going to hang on to it, and I kind of wish I did because of this next move. I'm about to. Oh, actually, we just missed it because it was moving so quick. But uh, I did actually shoot into melee to finish off uh, Gerlock. Yep, I boosted with Damiano and uh, took him down. Mm-hmm. As usual, troll failed the stuff check. Although, uh, we'd like to point out that this is, what, you're probably like third or fourth game with Gerlach? It's also the first game he actually killed something. And it's the first game he's actually killed something. So, <laughs> honestly, Dan's Dan's looking up when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> so I declare some charges, and I get to uh, run right through my own models because of Stannis. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. I was not a fan. Actually kind of put the cab in a dangerous position, especially because a lot of these are without flank, but they're reasonably capable with cab charge of getting in and... And doing some damage. And making sure that I don't clip the wall there on my charge and get on through. And... Did not declare assault. Probably should have. But. Yeah. I don't know. It, it ends up. I end up getting about as many kills as I can get out of it anyway. Mm. And at this point, the game is in, in full scrum mode. Yeah. It's now. It's now just an attrition fight that I am. Uh, that you are seeing through to the end. Yes. Mm-hmm. The one advantage of his list is, like I said, is this. Lots he's, of. He's already lost several models, which means he's going to start becoming much more time efficient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it starts to become time efficient. Also, 
I mean, you still have a lot of trouble mm-hmm. getting in. You kind of actually end up, because I killed so little those first couple of turns, you end up kind of stopping your own momentum. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not used to this list surviving as well as it has up to this point. Usually the entire unit of raiders dies before it gets into combat. So. Way to subtly say that uh, I didn't kill shit, man. <laughs> I know, but it almost hurt me. I would preferred you had. So at this point, I'm staring here going, well, I have a Helldiver, and every target I care about can't be knocked down because of Surefoot. Yeah. So, and with that uh, Daymortis throw the turn before, I'm sitting on 11 focus, so I was debating, do I load one I mean, the Helldiver up anyways and send it in to do its thing? And after yeah, I'm more... not sure where where you would have put it into, though. Yeah. Uh, you've got a couple of targets. I mean, Stannis is a priority, but you've got a lot there mm-hmm. to deal with it. And you could have put it towards the Vanguard, but then you're kind of getting in the way of your own Bane Knights. Yeah. So. So once again, sit sit here for probably four minutes. Just yeah, this back is and forth. your your pondering time. Might be might be where you're hurting the most. Yeah. Although, if looking at the clock, that turn did take me quite a while. Mm-hmm. Just the sheer volume of attacks eating up time. I'm actually lower on time than you are at this point. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to play a death clock, not being able to see the clock, though. Yeah, it, especially because, you know, I really didn't check my time. I think I maybe checked it once in here until after this turn. Right, and it's... Well, after this turn, it's when it starts to uh, starts to matter. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of this too is just you know also this usual game night store things. I mean, during the two turns and stuff like that. I mean, we have three people who are playing an online diplomacy game, so halfway through we had to stop for a second and discuss how we were going to you know deal with uh, one of our right. mutual I think, neighbors. I think there was a good a good section there while you were uh, pondering that I was chit chatting with people. I don't remember what they were talking about. Something else. Something uh, War Machine related. Mercs related. That we were... I think they were yammering with the Earthbreaker. Could be. I, I don't know. I can't remember. You sure it wasn't uh, uh, McBain being the uh, the Steelhead guy? Yeah. I'm pretty okay. sure that that was <laughs> yeah. not the subject of All our right. discussion. So once again, I'm just showing how long it's been since I've played. We're, we're hoping to use internet embarrassment to get him to come play with us on Wednesday nights again. So far, it's uh, it's 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 starting to work, and then and then part of me also feels like I can never show my face again. Just uh, come in with a mask. Mm-hmm. I think I might have to, I, and I can be like the first uh, War Machine luchador. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Only if you come with, you have to have the cape too. I can do that, and, and okay. you know, I've, I've, okay. I I have a couple of masks, so this, this, this could work. <laughs> so, are they are they faction color masks? Uh, they you actually have? they actually are red and gold. As a matter of fact, <laughs> all right, there you yeah, go. Yeah, so, uh, so you've got red and gold, and then you've got a, a green and yellow or a green and brown one for Mercs. I I don't, but I will. On uh, it. I I will see what I can do. All right. All right. So at this point, I've just sent Satixis in. The raiders didn't do much. Um, I did do one thing. I had one raider actually out of command over on the hill in the middle uh, that actually just ran out and took some free strikes. Uh, then Josh went ahead and missed the first one or two, so then I got really worried that I had jammed myself in. <laughs> yeah, it was it was glorious. And then thankfully Stannis hit. Because of one of those things where I'm like, wow, this is a really clever play. And then he started missing. I'm like, this was a really dumb play. <laughs> Uh, then the blood witches go in, uh, and I managed to kill one or two of the cav models with them. Uh, yeah, they take out they take out a couple of the cav guys and mm-hmm. pull a few of the regular steelheads off the table. Once again, a unit with yeah. two attacks each just grinds through some of my time. So, and Stannis still being over by the objective. Definitely helping out with that fearless. No, no leadership roles to make or anything like that. 
which actually does kind of come into play. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because I mean, a little bit at this point, four of the five units that could possibly have broken had been mauled below half. So yeah, on both sides. I mean, I think you have at this point one unit of cav, and my blood witches are the only two units that shouldn't have made a command check by this point. Yep. Some more ponderings at this point. I was going to say, it yeah. looks like there's some very hard thinking going on right now. Yeah, I mean, I had killed a bunch of the Steelhead Halberdiers, but I was really trying to figure out a way of getting some more. Um, I don't even remember what uh, what I was trying to taunt you with. or Yeah, so at this point... I think I, I actually uh, suggested that you, you take a... A free strike with your bane thrall on your own unit there. Yes, yes, That's, actually, that was, you were. Was, that was <laughs> when you when you had charged him. Yeah. So I move at this point. I move up uh, and curse the front unit of halberdiers with Tartarus. Um, then I immediately charge the unit of bane uh, thralls in and cancel tar- uh, and curse out completely. Yeah. So and that was a defensive strike on the Tartar sauce, doing absolutely dick all. Or not Tartarus, just a. Bane thrall. Oh, was it just a, yeah, it was one of the bane thralls. Yeah. Um, still. Hits and then did no damage. Way mm-hmm. to go, Stannis. So uh, at that point, I just killed Tar- I mean, Stannis to the point because of the corrosion check. Yep, it was the, the, mm-hmm. the corrosion, a couple of turns just hanging out on him is what uh, what did him in. Every little point matters. Yep. More pondering. Dan is good at pondering. That's why yep. he likes to do it. Yep. It's his favorite part of War Machine. Sadly, he still has a lot of options. Mm-hmm. So, so I can understand why. Yeah. So. Bay Knights come in and tangle themselves up with uh, the rifleman. Yeah. At this point, I'm just going. Come on, kill one. Come on, kill one. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, did you intentionally leave me nowhere to trample? Uh, or was that an accidental, just like spreading them out? That was that? me thinking. Oh, you can't hit multiple blasts. Uh, but yeah, in retrospect, that actually was a really good trample. That was list. my. <laughs> that was my. My plan was to then trample and sweep, or not trample and sweep, but trample and get some attacks in on them. Because um, if I can get the the alpha off on them, they won't really bounce back. Yeah. Bounce back too hard. Um, but you know, you wouldn't cancel it out perfectly without even realizing. Yep. So at this point, then I'm just moving, um, moving the bio thralls up in an aggressive position to hopefully have something to purge on next turn. Because like I said, so m- he had reach on so many models that it was just hard to get a purge that wouldn't kill more of my stuff than his. Well, especially because so much of your stuff is still there. Yeah. So at this point, I'm just like, well, I have extra focus. I'll get Hellbound up and going so he can't be charged. Um, And then this is... Then I just teleport myself into the zone. Terrible mistake. Because now you got my hopes up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm just sitting in the forest camping six, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, three for Hellbound, two for teleport. I had 11, so five or six. Uh, I think it was six. Yeah, yeah you're still, right. Because definitely... I never changed the the pile for the rest of the game. So yeah. Uh, so dominate that point uh, zone to score a control point. Um, then I look over at the clock and realize I have 17 minutes left, and then I start panicking because I'm nowhere close enough to where I want to be for that little clock. Yep. So I drop Surefoot there. Um, do you know a random point of corrosion? Yep, to the Vanguard, which is still bubbling away. The Galleon, the one model that I care the least about it being corroded, of course, uh, dropped the corrosion pretty much immediately. I'm trying to figure out exactly where his model could see, because Dan does not have arcs marked yet. Soon. And then 
get the vanguard into a position to make some attacks on. I don't remember what, but it ends up being sort of useless. I think I put them into Tartarus. Now Tartarus is still Tartarus is way back at the other end of the zone. It's just a main knight. Oh, it's just a main knight. Yep. So I, there, I, I finally get vengeance triggered. I'm so excited. See, where is Tartarus? Um, he's down. Oh, yeah. He's no, right next to Gatsby. Mind. He's way at the back. Yeah, it's just uh, into some random stuff. I say Tartarus is the closest thing to uh, to the to yeah. support I have in this list. So I'm actually playing him a little cautious. And um, that's Brian. Of course it is. Because he wants. To I would have guessed Brian or Nate. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Nate was actually remarkably well behaving himself in the table next to us. So it's true. He was busy trying his new new convergence list out, mm-hmm. which honestly sounded dirty. Yeah, it was what, Lucant and a Prime Axiom. And I, I don't remember what was in it, but I remember him saying, it was like basically he was armor 24, 26. That was after being kissed. So I don't know how he got that. I'll let you guys figure the, the math out on it, but what the hell. Yeah, it just sounded unpleasant. Um, just trying to edge the galleon into a position for next turn and to try and get some some things going on with it. And then I shoot a bunch of Bane Knights, which is actually surprisingly effective. Yeah, at this point your dice started picking up again. Yeah, back I got, I got, the, got, other, got back up the other half of the I rolled all crap was then I started to roll pretty well here. Um, unfortunately, it's a little, little too little too late mm-hmm. to really help the uh, situation. Yeah, because at this point I'm just like, okay, well, as you can see, I'm starting to get the pile ready for the uh, for the feet turn. Nine bane knights plus bane thrall feet. Um, one of these days, I'm actually just going to make a little grid so I just remind myself of you know feet targets go here. I think at that point you just randomly threw the javelin at someone. <clears throat> Uh, he was the only guy in range, and it was like, why not try and <laughs> sure. why not try and uh, spear a guy? Mm-hmm. Of course, that one didn't hit. But you still you killed half uh, of them. Yeah, they so. definitely they took a took a pounding and aren't going to retaliate too hard. Mm. That was the important thing. And then uh, Damiano, goes then I play a ballsy. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we go for end game. Damiano shifts uh, Surefoot, which I dropped at the beginning of the turn, back on to himself. Because that's the best place to do it, and I, Which well, I did feed. Basically, it. ruins my assassination run. Then actually, yeah, because otherwise, the Helldiver next turn would pop up and headbutt you. Right, and that's mm-hmm. and then that's why we made over. sure to yep. keep Surefoot up, and but we wanted to to move it onto Damiano since he's a oh you can't remove it from my caster by throwing or killing the model that has it if mm-hmm. it's on the caster. Yeah, if you would have left on the Vanguard, I just would have yeah. found a way to get rid of the Vanguard, and then I feet and charge that random Pod guy. And then we go back to the scrum. Yep. Pretty much just shuffle some things around and start making attacks. And this is where having most of your army be dead is really great on your clock. Yeah, that was that that was the, the one remaining steelhead in uh in the min squad. And then now the larger squad kind of shifting into position here. Both to make attacks and to make some room for the cav to get a couple of attacks in. That guy had to sneak around some some reach just to... Yeah, you actually end up making a wall with some other guys to block line of sight, which was a really good play. Yeah, it was important to try and get, get him where he needed to be, because I needed, needed the flank bonus. To hit the Satixis reliably. So yeah. So at this point he's just kind of starting to mulch through my blood was I and my uh, wizards. So I forget why we flipped over the clock to your side. Oh, you were trying to get something was, in war room. Yeah, I was something? looking up some stat of something. Yeah, I don't remember what. Can't actually imagine what everything over there is. High defense, low armor. I think we might. I mean, we might have been looking for their exact armor, that uh, whether be. it was eleven or twelve, because yeah. it was. Was the thing. Mm-hmm. And then my couple of remaining Kev on that squad make a move in.
can do a pretty good job of clearing that up. Yeah. Honestly, they... Those were some good roles. Yep. Right there were there. some good roles. You, you needed that at that point. Yeah. At that yeah point. They were way overdue. It yeah, put basically me, every attack over there connected. Yeah, it put me back in the back in the game, honestly. And then that... This is actually a ride-by uh, that I make, because I'm going to try and contest the zone. And I'm going to backswing my ride-by and get... Try and get both of them. I only end up getting one and take the free strike anyway. Now that I'm thinking about it, can you do a special attack yeah. or star attack on a yep. ride Yes, by? you can. Okay. Well, good to know. We did do that right then. And then I get him into the zone to prevent scoring yeah. again. As I count up and get really sad when I realize I missed killing him by one or two. Yeah, it was uh, it was two points mm-hmm. uh, that he had left after that. So I'm sitting here going, all right, you let me score on your turn, and this is good for me. I just didn't have anything else that could make it in there. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. And I didn't have Stannis. Otherwise, I would have just gone right around the other way. So it took... Uh... Yep. So at this point, there is no more time for pondering. I'm now in speed play mode. Yep. So just... Full on uh, trying to get things in. Yep. So move up my vengeance move. Just kind of get it so that that cab model has to die. Um... Kill a random rifleman. Kill a... Kill the rest of that guy, and then another four. Don't have to do anything about, so good for me. Um, like I said, once again, I'm just trying to figure out what do I want to do with that Helldiver at this point. eventually realize I can put them in such a spot that I can actually get back strikes on a few models. So I think you end up only really being able to get the... Uh... I could have done it on the Vanguard. I just chose not to. Okay. So I'm not... Ex- uh, just because I don't think it would... Re- Under your feet, he really wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, and this was... Yeah, that was feet turn. Yeah, because, I mean, your Vanguard was armor 22 or 23, so... Uh, 21, 22. actually. Okay. Because uh, you wouldn't have wouldn't have to have worried about the shield. Okay, but still, I mean, a single power thirteen wasn't going to do much. Yeah, it was not going to. And at this point, you know, I'm staring down a galleon from only uh, twelve or thirteen inches away, so I needed every point of focus I could get. Yeah. So yeah, I've played against Josh enough, also to know that the galleon will wreck me if I get it. I mean, he gets into it. I mean, it's. On the one hand, it's a threat you do have to to play around and think about, but it's surprisingly not as threatening as as most people want to believe. Mm-hmm. Of course, though, the one time you let it, it will catch yeah. you and Rick just completely, completely get you. Because mm-hmm. I think with Gatsby in the forest, even I mean, I guess seventeen, so seventeen, I would need to dead eye and boost yeah. to have a reasonable chance of catching yeah. you. But like I said, I mean, at this point, I'm up, so there's no point in sacrificing. Right, and, to and get the fact flashy. that it's, and sitting on the focus uh, definitely helps too, because mm-hmm. I don't get uh, you have da- to, if I don't yeah. get damage, it doesn't do it. And, yeah, basically, you'd have to spend so much focus to do it that I would be able to survive the hit. Yeah, and I mean, definitely, I don't know, even surviving, even surviving the uh, the hit and the and the follow up attack. It also pulls you out of position. It's it's bad, mm-hmm. but it's not. Yeah, yep. it wouldn't it wouldn't have been game. All right. So Tartarus moved up, uh, did a quick swing. I think this was actually the turn where I cursed the Halberdiers and then immediately charged them for no effect. So so just yeah, just more more of the grind. Yeah, of which there was quite a bit of this mm-hmm. game. There's surprisingly little left on the board at the end of this. Take a, and this is where this is where leadership, yeah, comes into play here because he actually breaks. <laughs> and all the while, my clock continues to ch- I mean, tick on down. 
Yeah, there's a lot. You make a lot of attacks this turn. Yeah. Yeah, actually... But look how much time you have left. I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, I think every model that could make an attack made an attack this turn, with the possible exception of Gatsby. Uh, and, like, one of the... No, 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 all the Bane Thralls end up... Yeah. Or not Bane Thralls, uh... Bile thralls and no, one of yeah. here, don't they? I think one maybe one of them doesn't shoot. Yeah, but then yeah, this is where it gets real. Uh, break out the spray template and start actually just shooting people with bile thralls with their mighty rat three. We Although get I, a few of them. Yeah, I, that's honestly, cause, that's because one of the guys aimed. And you know, I was just ignoring. Yeah, ignoring mm-hmm. the. Uh, thing. You also catch uh, one of your own troopers in the back there, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So but, I think you needed you needed like eights or tens. I can't remember, but it was not uh, tens. Yeah, so. It's basically Some pretty good rolls. It's basically the same rule I use for like when I'm ever playing any of my weapon master swarms. It's I'm going to throw a lot of dice at you. Eventually, I will roll the number I need. Yeah, and that's and that's mm. which may or may not be the down, down the down, downfall <laughs> of any the downfall of any dice related randomization in games. I guess mm-hmm. is that eventually, if you just roll enough dice, you'll yeah. get. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that may be the 40k background in me. That you know, a little bit. It's also why you can't play Ashland. That's true. Well, that's also I know better. <laughs> yeah, I say I have seen three Ashlands destroyed now, so um, and at least two more permanently foamed. So it's a shame because she's so close to being amazing. There's just too much stuff that too many shenanigans to knock her down. So this was the amazingness of watching four Bay Knights charge a Jack and do two points of damage. Yeah, well, I mean, charging into a... <laughs> defense 17, Jack. Defense 17, because 13 base plus the set defense and... Uh, but, I mean, it just sure sounds so much more pathetic when you just, you know, leave that yeah. part out. I mean, come on. I'm Kirk, so you should feel sorry for me. At this point, I'm going to have to throttle Dan. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the end of the battle report. Uh, moves up there, and this is where you... Get really? Your... Yeah, really. All well, at this point, I was like, "Well, the night rush is never going to get another good spell target." So at this point, uh, he moves up so you can't trample through. Yep. Was that intentional too? Yes. Not to give that, that one at that point was a uh, here's something that you can't just easily shift. Um, and then I decide that I'm going to back up to the very edge of the zone, uh, and then camp on some focus. Uh, which, measuring it out, uh, this was actually basically ten and a half inches away from the front edge of the night wrench, just so you couldn't actually get a drag shot in. Uh, a much easier way that I could have done this, and Josh pointed out after the game, is I could have just also put two clouds out and hidden behind them. Yeah, and you then, had the you had the focus that you were sitting on. Mm-hmm. And then, really... I could, then I could have been in a more convenient position. Right, and there's really no reason not to completely eliminate any possibility. Because well, let's say I pulled some shenanigans here and managed to kill the the arc node, mm. you know, then you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Whereas you could have put clouds up and never had the problem. Exactly. So at this point, I shift the clock back over, look at it again, and then realize I have under seven minutes. Yep. And this is where I really start. And this is where I stare at the board and hope that there's a way to get to Gatsby and try to decide how much focus goes on mm-hmm. my galleon. And I think I camp most of it. Yeah, because at some point you asked me what his defense is, and I reminded it's 17, and you yeah. start doing some counting and realizing you're going to get one swing. Well, and I realized even that... Well, I realized that at a POW 14, I wasn't going to get through his armor. I would have taken... I'll take 50-50-ish mm-hmm. odds. Mm-hmm. Um, try, to get in, try to get into you. Yeah. Um, but I also needed to camp some focus. Yeah, because like I, I said, you would have had to spend so much focus to get it yeah, that if Damiano it wasn't, would if not wasn't, have been able to finish it. If it wasn't guaranteed, it wasn't going to be. Yeah. Um, I mean, even just pulling you out of position would have been good, but I would have Damiano would have been too open to the to Bane Thralls even, right? Or to the Bane Knights right there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the other thing is, if he pulled me in and, you know, was able to... You know, let me survive. I could have just also just feed it back and then death nine march sign and get like a pow eighteen on. Yeah, him, well, so. I mean, and you would have just you could also just start scoring the zone. I needed to yeah. move the the galleon up anyway. Uh, so he rallies, yeah. which doesn't really matter because he doesn't get to go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is he just stayed in place and rallied though. So, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I did not foresee what would happen next, uh, and the chance that he would be useful in the zone as opposed mm-hmm. to further back. So the halberdiers move up and continue swinging away. 
Yep. I'm just kind of chew through. I don't know if they take anything out over there. Yeah, they do, because I... I think you know you end up making a bunch You're of You're right. Checks. This is the turn I actually made tough checks. All the tough checks. Yes. Okay. Except that one. Yep. Almost all the tough checks. Takes a swing at the night rat. Sure, no, no the, another rain throw. Another rain throw. See, I don't even remember. This was yesterday, and I can't remember. Yeah. Vanguard just, just kind of shifts to get some more targets and starts, yeah, he starts swinging on Tartarus. Um, this is you remembering the shield was out. Yep. And swing at the pole arm. Managed to hit and put a little damage into him. He did five. <laughs> it's uh, scared the crap out of everyone. <laughs> Andy being yes. an asshole. <laughs> moving that guy. Well, moving that guy over to try and get him uh, get a position. Maybe I can squeak a galleon through. I'll trample my own guys if I have to. Oh, not this turn. Uh-huh. Damiano walks up and just swings at a Bane Knight. And, uh... And whiffs. Yep. Hey, he's not, he's not a real beat stick caster. He's a support, but... Then... Then I just run the Galleon, because it's the only way I can be absolutely sh- certain it gets in there. Yep. Take the free strike. Which does minor damage. Yeah. I mean, it's it hits reasonably hard, but it mm-hmm. doesn't At this point I mean it's yeah, it's not it's not gonna matter. Yeah. For what the game does. Yeah. And uh flip it over to you. Like I said, at this point I'm getting very animated because I'm trying to move quickly. Uh, thankfully, Josh had taken enough time that I was able to come up with somewhat of a plan, uh, which is my personal favorite plan involving anything with Crix, which is uh, when in doubt, kill my own army to clear the way to victory. So this time you had pre-pondered? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, which will spare us all from four minutes of watching me just sit there. <laughs> just standing <laughs> watch, well, watching your hands yet, on the table. In <laughs> accelerated time here. Yeah. So I'm basically blowing up my entire left flank. Yeah, at this point, you just, you literally, you yeah. purge all the things. Yes. Everything, everything, I think, pretty much, except, like, that one cav guy back there, mm-hmm. uh, ends up being hit with, with, a, with a bile thrall yeah. purge. At this point, I'm actually really sad that uh, the banner is alive, because tough checks are horrendously eating into my clock. But, I basically, I knew at this point I had to clear the zone, so... Clears through. I think I even hit my own hell diver, which I didn't really even care about. So, yep, is sort of inconsequential damage. Yeah, for... total. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I mean it's a hell diver. Its grid is ridiculous, but also, so what? So he just okay. moves over and it's like pops into the zone. Yep. Tartarus moves up to get to the objective and takes a swing at it. Put Actually, some decent damage into it. Yeah, too. it did actually. Twelve points of damage to it. So. Yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of the the beginning. Yep. And so then, for what happens next yep. year? So then Gatsby goes, and then he feats, brings back a whole bunch of Bane <sighs> knights and uh, some random other things. Um, in retrospect, I don't even know why I brought back the non-reach models because they never would have been able to do anything. Yeah. Probably feats just, rhymes with cheats. Yep. It's just it's. It's actually, honestly, I, there's a lot of things he could have done that would have been way worse with it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like no. if you're if you're gonna be if you're gonna be annoyed with Crix at this, you ought to be annoyed with uh, Excarnate Bile Thrall because that's really what yep. does it for him. So at this point, the one main knight that had uh, the ability to reach the, the cav gets in and manages to kill him. Yep. Um, and this was more inefficiencies at my part. I mean, I didn't curse him. I didn't do anything else. I just did it. And yep. Then go in and break the objective for the game and. Finish with and two and a half minutes left on the clock. Have yeah. have just enough space too to get Gatsby into that zone. That was yeah. the other critical because he went basically across the board this turn. Mm-hmm. 
So, but hey, you had more time on your clock. I did. I if this, this had gone one more turn, if something had gone wrong, Dan probably would have lost on time. I would have lost on time. Yeah. So, all right, and that's the mm-hmm. match. Uh, so this was Dan. This is Josh. This is Steve. Right, thanks for joining us. <laughs>